Thanks everyone for joining us. We're going to go over a quick tidy data demo. That's something that's really foundational when working in data science. And it's also something that can just be tough for, for uh, uh, different people to grasp. Uh, hand up, I was a math major in college and yet it took me probably a month and a lot of coaching from Aaron to really uh, get natural at putting data sets in tidy data format to start with. Uh, so the term tidy data comes from data scientist Hadley Wickham, who used the term in 2014. He's one of the preeminent data scientists around today, holds professorships at Rice, Stanford, and I think the University of Auckland. Um, we've got some resources on the website that have more resources about uh, his uh, study about tidy data. I'm going to take you through a quick demonstration here about how to take an untidy data set and make it something that you can work with in data classroom and your students will be able to use uh, in whatever discipline they go into and are working with data. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you how to tidy up this data set. Other point I want to make while I'm working is, is just because a data set is not in tidy format doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean it's in a, in, it's a bad decision. It's just if you want to take advantage of a computer fully, you're going to have to organize it in terms of variables because that's how computers work with data. Um, so first thing I'm going to do here is get rid of the top two rows. Um, you can't have titles in, in tidy data. You can't have extraneous stuff. Stuff Row one needs to be your column headers. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the um, extra column there too. And then I'm just going to stop and think about this data for a second. And I want to ask myself, what are the variables that are contained here? And I can see, okay, one variable is day and that has its own column. So that one's okay. Then I look at column B and I think about what are the variables there? And there's actually two variables contained within a single column. And that's a no-no for tidy data because we have the variable of plant. Which plant is it? Is it plant A? Is it plant B? Is it another plant that we haven't collected data for yet? Plant C, plant D? Plant is, is a variable. So I'm going to make a column that gives plant its own header because that is the name of a variable here. Then uh, I'm also going to make a new column called height in centimeters because that that is the the variable the value of of that's in these cells is the value of that height variable and then i'm going to fill in this with a but i'm not going to just leave, put a in one row i'm going to put a in all of the rows that are recorded for for plant a so now we've we've got that now I think you can probably already see where we're going with plant B. I'm gonna take these height measurements and I'm gonna put them in the column called height, which is the height variable. And then in this values of, of this plant variable, I'm gonna call that uh, B, I'm gonna put that in there. And then we have some blank cells for day and it, it might be counterintuitive at first to repeat these, but if you think about it, day is a variable. And if we want to attest for an effective day or an effective time, we have to include that, that variable called day and put a value of it um, in each row of the data set. So here we have it, it's tidy data. Each column is a variable, each row is an independent observation. And I'll just chime in to add, I think a common mistake with tidy data, especially when, when one of your variables relates to time, that we have kind of this like journal mindset where for our day one, you want to get like everything that happened on day one uh, in the same row. And that's really not the, the proper way to think about time when it's a variable that could have itself a relationship to height or to the plants. Yeah, that, that's a good point of, of also, you know, like it's not illogical to do, a, to record a data set in something other than tidy format. It's just not thinking about it in terms of variables. And when you think in terms of variables, then you can think in terms of, okay, what, which variable do I want to put on X? Which variable do I want to put on Y? Which variable do I want to test for a statistical effect of? And, and you can see how tidy data lends itself to that. Let's take a look at, a, at another example that you've set up for us, Blake. And this, this data set here, Blake, what you want to tell us a little bit about what, what, this, what these data are and where they came from. And I'm just going to scroll to the side so people can see all of these, that data set. These data came from, I think one of Aaron from your classrooms that was doing the classic potato osmosis lab. And so a couple of different student groups gave themselves names. You have the guinea pigs, the mighty chondrias, and so basic that each carried out a different, uh, or carried out the same experiment 
uh, looking at how the initial mass of the potato changed after being placed in, a, in uh, concentrations of varying molarity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that, that's right. That's what's going on here. Um, and so with this example, we've got one hidden variable that hasn't been recorded or at least not recorded properly. And you, you see how we have what they've done here. This is a little bit different than the last untidy data set where there were multiple variables within the same column. Here, the issue is that we've got this variable, uh, which is student group that's not recorded. And the student group variable has values of the guinea pigs, mitochondrias are so basic. Those are categorical variables and those are, those are different values. Um, but you might want to analyze that variable because you might want to test if there is an effect of which group was recording the data. You know, maybe one group uh, tended to record higher measurements or lower measurements than another. You wouldn't be able to test for that unless you record this variable. So I'm gonna call this variable student group. I'm gonna put that there. I'm also, I'm gonna make everything on here bold just so it can be read a little bit easier. Um, and then in student group, I'm gonna I'm gonna put we'll do the the guinea pigs uh, first, and put them in. And I, how many we have? One, two, three, four, five, six data points for that group. So we put that in there. You know, uh, you're gonna bring your you're gonna bring the column header for student group down one row. Well, I think what I'm what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna I'm just gonna move this all up here for a second and then i'm going to cut that top row out in just a minute um so here i've got now if i'm just looking at this table you know this this is in tidy format we probably don't want this this uh space up at the top but i just didn't want to eliminate these yet so mitochondrias i think we also have six data points for and so basic uh, I think we also have six data points for, so these give us the space to put that in. And now I can just uh, I can just eliminate this top row um, altogether, move that up. And now it's just a matter of pulling these data over here. So sucrose concentration for mitochondrias was like this, corresponding initial mass was like this and corresponding final mass this so i can place that in there and now i can just get rid of these columns uh all together i'm just going to delete those columns so now we come back now i need to get the sucrose concentration these were the data points from so basic the those values attached to these values and final mass we'll bring that over here and then i'm just going to delete this, uh, entirely and then i'll just i always like to do that and then one one trip i always love uh to go over to view and freeze the top row so that when you scroll you uh you don't lose sight of your uh, column headers. So that's it. That's how you how you tidy up that. We have four variables, student group, which is categorical, sucrose concentration, which is numeric if you think about it as a number, or it's categorical if you think about it as a treatment. Uh, we have initial mass, which is numeric, and final mass, which is numeric. Great. Yeah, it looks tidy. Yeah, tidy and ready, ready to ready to analyze. Okay, so thanks for watching this tutorial. Hope hope you found it helpful.